From the point of view of society and its development, energy plays a fundamental role. For this reason, it is very important to know how much energy is invested in obtaining energy. The greater that return, the greater the capacity of society to develop. An indicator that tries to measure this potential is the EROEI or the energy returned on the energy invested. At Energy Technology Sherpa, we want to bring you this channel to get acquainted with technologies and investments in the energy sector, primarily clean energy technologies. Sherpa is a key concept as we want to be the right companion for you in a journey that is difficult somehow. The concept was developed to measure the profitability of oil extraction wells, regardless of particular financial conditions. Originally the oil fields were very accessible and the energy of an equivalent barrel of oil was enough to extract 100. The necessary energy considers both that used to manufacture the extraction means, and the fuel necessary for its operation. As the cheap deposits were depleted, the indicator deteriorated. But we still do not have energy that at the user level is completely usable. This fuel must be refined, transported to the distribution points, and have a recharging infrastructure that allows its use in vehicles. In all these processes it is necessary to invest energy in manufacturing and operation. Let's do a similar analysis for the electricity, from fuel extraction to the injection into the grid. This will allow us to do a fair comparison of the main electricity production technologies. Energy returned over energy invested do have huge variations for each technology as the values are affected by the location of each of the energy investments. So, this is the reason that the average values are giving us an indication, but they are not written in stone. Moreover, for some of them we may expect relevant modifications as is the case for coal and gas or wind and PV. The first two technologies are suffering a decrease in their ratios caused by a bigger difficulty in extracting the raw material whilst the other two are expected to get improvements thanks to improvements in efficiency and reduction in the use of some materials. A widely used plot is representing the relationship between the net energy produced and the returned energy over invested energy ratio. Some authors claim that for a given technology, below a threshold for the energy returned, that is called the energy cliff, it makes no sense to use it. Representing in this plot the average values for the mainstream power generation technologies is giving us valuable information. Whilst nuclear and hydro are the top performers, the new kids in the block, PV and wind, are starting to compete with the conventional power generation technologies using coal and gas. However, many different factors may affect these values. Will the life extension projected for the current nuclear power plants require a significant energy investment to comply with all safety requirements derived from the Fukushima accident? Will the water, a scarce resource that is starting to be traded in stock markets, hamper the returned energy for hydropower plants? Will rare earth or silver access required for wind and PV respectively affect negatively to these technologies? There will be a new source of cheap coal or gas or the situation will worsen faster than anticipated. Who knows? However, mankind always has found its way in this quest for the energy, and will continue doing it. Still, many factors may affect these ratios and are extremely difficult to assess properly. Nuclear waste management, CO2 suppression for conventional fossil power plants, energy storage and dispatchability for renewable energies, what is more relevant is the expected evolution trend and how new technologies may help. Thanks for watching.